Today we're back with Strat Game versus Jellyfish. We're going straight to game three as in game two, Jellyfish is thin and tall high elf build with Imric on a dragon, two phoenixes, and a bunch of cavalry ran into the buzzsaw that was Strat Game's well-balanced Skaven build. As soon as those high elves single entities landed they had no chance of escape and were defeated in relatively short order ika claw in particular carried very heavily in this game with some nice flensing ruins and good value overall on his doom wheel now let's get back to game three and now we are back this time with the empire versus vampire counts and normally a lot of people would Talk down to a nice defensive formation, but if I hold the space bar, you can see Strat Games uh, positioning here in this beautiful defensive geometry, protecting the war wagons and the demigriff halberds in the center. Royal Altor of Griffites, we got two war wagons, four halberds, I believe. Yes, some spearmen, swordsmen, jade wizard, and they're going to be trying to defend their little Hussite wagon fort here in order to take down the foul vampire counts, blood dragon. For Jellyfish here, and he's got a nice wide line of Skeleton Warriors, Skeleton Spears, and Zombies. Lots and lots of chaff to soak up damage, and Necromancer stroking his Forbidden Rod. And then for additional hitting power, we've got a few more units of Knights down here. Some Black Knights, Lances and Barding, and one single Blood Knight. So, definitely is interesting. This matchup has turned for a few reasons from what it was before. Previously... Um, in my experience, man, these Black Knights in this particular color scheme do actually look pretty good. I'm normally not that big of a fan of them, but totally just getting distracted. Anyway, um, I mean, Volkmar, his chariots have some issues right now, Volkmar included. Um, he has, like, some mass and animation issues where he'll get stuck a lot more often than he would used to. So this matchup used to be one where I would think he was almost an auto-pick, but uh, it's no longer necessarily the case. Now, I mean, I think Empire's a lot more reliant on War Wagons to win here. Um, obviously, they're going to be well defended, and the fact that they are War Wagons means that even if they get interrupted in melee combat momentarily, they're not going to bleed models like a unit of handgunners or even outriders would, since the reason why you see them so often. But to Jellyfish doing a nice job, just patiently approaching here with all his forces. Um, not kind of overrushing in his cav before the rest of his army is ready. Very smartly just getting everything into position. Obviously, the whole army can really only go at the speed of the zombies. A little bit unfortunate. But I've uh, got some huntsmen in the defensive position as well. They're going to be opening up. Um, yeah, probably on the necromancer, it looks like. Try and get rid of some healing. The war wagons are focusing on the blood dragon. And Franz has got to be a little bit careful that he doesn't get caught out by the blood dragon. Dragons in general, obviously, very good right now. The Blood Dragon is one of the best, if not the best, individual uh, dragon generic character, probably. I mean, he's so strong. And the fact that he's, of course, vampire counts means he can pretty much heal cap himself fairly reliably. So as long as he doesn't take too much damage in one big burst, should be able to survive most of this game. But uh, yeah, we're going to keep a lot of cinematic cams as with this nice kind of stable defensive position... Most of the action is happening in this one localized area. It has some zombies raising in the back line, and you see now why war wagons are so impactful. The guys are going to continue shooting even while they're in melee, while the huntsmen are forced to reposition. And the vampire count player is smartly just attacking the swordsmen with his cavalry right now, trying to thin out the numbers of the empire, get rid of some of them. Looks like I'm going to have a nice breath attack coming in the back there. Does a little bit of friendly fire damage, but also gets a... Decent hit on those Halbadiers. Not too much damage on the Royal Alt of Griffites so far. They are responding well to this Black Knight, but we see some cycle charging from the Vargeis here. Will it actually lead to these Empire units routing? Arl here is providing a nice little leadership stability, and you can see that his kind of leadership aura is almost exactly the same size as this formation, which I believe is probably intentional all things considered, so that all those units can get that encouraged. He also has hold the line for a little bit of extra leadership as well, and a tighter radius. Melee defense, very important. Um, but Franz is kind of the main leadership component here, so he's got to be careful not to overcommit into a bad engagement. Royal Alt of Griffites moving to respond to the Vargeis, pushing them away very effectively. But since there's only the one Demi Halberd, they can only be in one place at one time. 
And if Jellyfish is smart, he's going to split his attack units, his large attack units, to try and attack from different angles. And we see him doing just that. But man, this Blood Dragon already getting close to its healing cap as the War Wagons have just been consistently focusing it down. Huntsmen, on the other hand, really haven't had a chance to fire at all. They've been interrupted by zombies pretty much the entire time. But we see a huge, devastating Helm of Discord, one of the reasons why the Blood Dragon is so strong significantly nerfs the melee stats of everything. Uh, Franz is going to respond, but his uh, Stand Your Ground and the Reichland Rune Fang don't last as long, so he ends up being fairly heavily debuffed in this engagement. And let's pull the health bars back up in just a minute and see, but they are doing some nice matched animations right now. Carl looks like he's taking the major south end of that engagement as the Blood Dragon is fully juiced up to the gills with a thousand weapon strength. With all of his, you know, sort of anti-heroes, heart piercing, everything else combined all together. Just absolutely dumpsters Franz in just a few hits. One of the biggest downsides by far. Any Griffin or Hippogriff character is their general lack of HP. And Carl gets severely punished there in an alarmingly short amount of time. That is going to set Strat Game back just a little bit on the balance of power. We'll see if his units are able to ha hang on. So far, it's not turning into a mass route. But the question is, can Franz actually escape? Or if he gets fully killed here, um, that will be obviously a much more devastating leadership impact. He is going to go ahead and shatter, but let's keep that in the background. We'll watch for that little icon to pop up, indicating that he has died, if that's the case. Or let's see if he escapes. Either one, yep, looks like has been wiped out. So Carl is fully down. That is going to provide a fairly impactful leadership debuff to this entire Empire army here. Lord recently died minus 16 leadership. So uh, against a faction that preys on the leadership like Vampire counts, it's definitely very scary, but the Empire is not going to give up easily. Still got these Demis doing quite well, getting some nice healing from the uh, Jade Wizard there, who's also going to continue fighting and providing a little bit of encourage in this blob if he can manage to stay alive and not rout, but his own leadership is getting quite low. Let's see how things continue to pan out. We look at the cavalry situation. The vampire counts have been able to sustain their cavalry despite taking immense damage, which is fairly typical for their faction, obviously. But uh, let's see here. We'll get in close, soak up some more beautiful cinematic shots. Albedeers holding the line as best they can. Lines are collapsing all over the place. Things are getting a little bit chaotic. Blood Knights managed to get an engagement here, mostly on the war wagons, although there's plenty of other halberds and other units to support. Royal Alt of Griffites respond, and Blood Knights start taking some fairly significant damage. Another really nice Earth Blood. Oh man, that's painful. I really feel like Demigriff Knights could do with like plus three extra leadership, plus four, because like right there, they were right on the line. They end up routing. It's super unfortunate, because then the Blood Dragon's able to come in. Not that they survive this attack fairly well. Anyway, he's up to a thousand weapon strength again with the double stack. A sort of anti-heroes and hard piercing and it's just going to punish those demis fairly severely war wagons trying to pull away and kite um but just not able to do so honestly had franz been able to escape that situation and not get fully killed by the blood dragon it's possible that uh you know he could have helped bail out from this situation but as it is right now it's up to the war wagons to carry and they potentially can here as long as they're able to continue firing. So from Jellyfish's perspective, he's got to continue following up on these war wagons, making sure they can't get set with support, especially like spear or halberd infantry support. Where ult of fights do come back from route, though, they're going to counter charge and provide just such a screen here. A little bit of invocation of the heck on those blood knights to keep them fighting nice and healthy. But uh, Demis, they're still trying. They've got this one model over here carrying the flag, but for the most part, fighting those Blood Knights and actually dealing some fairly hefty damage to them. Black Knights just about crumble away as well, chasing that war wagon. So a lot of the power units for vampires are starting to fall. There's a glimmer of hope yet for the Empire, but unfortunately, the Royal Althorps are finished off here by the Blood Knights. Blood Knights uh, get this thing here when they're out of melee, they're going to get an additional 20% missile resistance, which will certainly help them shrug off the damage from those war wagons, but they're getting fairly close to their healing cap. Obviously, the blood dragon is already healing capped, now going to try and come in and punish this jade wizard. Probably output a lot of his healing already, but 
very useful to get rid of the leadership effect. Just quickly terrifies and is going to uh, get tossed around a little bit there. But as he does get tossed around, that affords War Wagon's an opportunity to try and shoot the Blood Dragon here. Take it down. But let's see. Blood Knights are continuing to pursue. And even though the War Wagons have a newfound speed, they're still not able to outrun Blood Knights by any means. And uh, Jade Wizard does come back from out, throws a little... Earth. Throws a little earth blood on himself, but another invocation on those blood knights. And uh, between the blood dragon and the blood knights at this point, they should be able to win this as long as they can keep the pressure on the war wagons, and not allow this blood dragon to fall. War wagons are doing their best, though. They've still got three models online in this case, and a lot of ammunition left, doing some nice damage right now. That blood dragon, another big, huge weapon. Damage, spike, and I think he just eliminated the uh, Lord of Lifecaster with that. But he were to die, I mean, I guess the Necromancer is also still here providing some leadership benefit. But I think the Blood Dragon goes down. Everything kind of cascades against the vampires. But I don't know. There's still a half health unit of Blood Knights also. <laughs> That's going to be extremely tough to kill. Uh, for how tattered and tired the Empire army is. Let's see. A little bit of a camera glitch there as we get back into it. The Empire infantry, actually, if they if their leadership could, wouldn't give out and they were to... If they had the ability to kind of form up and work together, they could probably deal with the Blood Knights. But the Blood Knights there, uh, unbraced halberds just take a nasty charge. And one of the few health units that could potentially contribute with the war wagons i don't know i might have actually just counter charged the war wagons in there to provide a little bit of mass blocking for the halberdiers so they didn't get run over like that um or just brace the halberdiers or i don't know but regardless as the zombies and skeletons are continuing to just grind it out blood knights catch this war wagon and it's uh bad news for these outriders riding in the back they look like outriders at least Will they be able to get away? It looks like they actually routed, unfortunately. One unit model goes down as well. And that's pretty much going to be game for Strat Games Empire Army with Jellyfish now taking the win. There it is. So, yeah, tough, tough for me as an Empire main to kind of see that. But at the same time, Strat Game definitely acquitted himself well. I mean, he did... As, as well as he could given the circumstances and we see some of the crazy inflated value on these war wagons as they try to get through the healing caps of some of those high value units albedir is also super useful here um yeah ultimately carl obviously is a uh doesn't pay out but it's tough against the vampire blood dragon lord like that it's really tough and i don't have a good recommendation for lord choice in this matchup right now even as an empire main like they're all all of them have risks and problems even when volkbar was at his peak arguably in warhammer 2 in this matchup uh there were still potentially some risks and this guy is one of them like you know you swap carl out for volkmar here and the build is probably equally vulnerable to him if not more so so it's definitely an interesting one to think about. I don't really have a lot of great solutions, but I need to workshop this matchup some more and see for myself. But it's uh, a valiant attempt by Strat Game. Very well played to Jellyfish, though, in terms of picking him apart and kind of choosing where to place his high-value units. The vast majority of the value was carried by these two right here with the Blood Dragon Vampire Lord and the Blood Knights themselves. Getting some really nice value. One of the Black Knights also extremely cost-effective. They're like Undead Reichsguard for cheaper. Really good. Uh, Skeleton Warriors, too, with, like, 400 value is pretty interesting. Definitely not something you see every day. On the Empire's side here, yeah, one Spearman with 1,000 damage value as well is pretty interesting. That kind of comes from the inflation from the healing, of course, on Vampire counts. But, yeah, just Carl, Demigriff Knights, the uh, Royal Demigriff Knights got close enough. They didn't quite pay for themselves, but ultimately Carl just getting creamed right there was the downfall of Strat Game, but he's got plenty more games to bring it back, so be sure to subscribe for the rest of this series and more uh, coming soon. Like it, share it with a friend. That's it for today. Thanks again. See you next time.